It was another Friday, but for one thing, it was my husband and I's wedding anniversary, 10 years. I was sitting there having a slow breakfast. It was 10 o'clock in the morning, and I was already late for work. I've always had a hard time waking up at 7 or 8 in the morning, but William, my husband, used to wake me up. Today, he didn't wake me up for the simple reason that we were fighting. I thought at least today he would forget about it, but no. To be honest, we have been fighting a lot lately over little things, and of course it was my fault. The current quarrel was because of me. My husband always asked me to turn off all the electronics at home when I left the house. Often I went out after him, because I worked closer. He had his reasons for saying that we lived within our means, we didn't take credit for anything, and we thought long and hard about every major purchase and weighed our options. Electronics at home were quite expensive, and I understood my husband perfectly. That day I came home angry. Something had happened at work, I don't remember, and to my husband's next rebuke I shouted hard, called him greedy and stingy, and it hurt him. William was never like that. He spared nothing for my well-being. I don't know why I said that. I was already dressed for work, standing in one skirt and an unbuttoned blouse, when the doorbell rang. In years past, my husband had always taken off work for our wedding anniversary, and I had hoped from the morning that it would be the same this time. When I opened the door with a smile on my face, I saw only a messenger with flowers. Only when I closed the door, I realized that he was staring at my half-naked body. Flowers seemed to have turned my head. I called at work, said that today was the anniversary, and asked for today. Then immediately thanked my husband for the flowers. Thank you for the flowers, my love, congratulations. You're welcome, and I congratulate you. I can't get away, I'm sorry. I hope I remembered to turn everything off before I went out. That last sentence pissed me off. Yes, yes, I turned it off. I'm sick of it. I don't know what came over me. I realized too late that I shouldn't have written that. A few minutes later, he sent a picture of the correspondence with the manager of our favorite restaurant. After what I wrote, he just canceled the reservation. I was pissed off again. How could he be? Upset, I lay in bed and almost roared with resentment. The hell dragged me to write such a thing. He had taken the first step toward reconciliation, and I had done that. After sobbing for another 15 minutes, it suddenly dawned on me. I would make him an unforgettable evening, so that fighting was out of the question. I took the phone and made an appointment with his master to do nails, eyelashes, and in general to bring beauty. She came into my position and canceled a few upcoming appointments, thus freeing up time for me. While I had my hair done, an interesting thought occurred to me. On my husband's phone, I somehow found some pictures of a girl. She had blonde hair, but with a pink tint. For sure William would like it, so I decided to do the same hair. I was already a blonde, so adding pink highlights wasn't a problem. After the salon, I immediately went to the mall. I had dresses, but for today, I wanted something different, special. Already in the second store, I found what I wanted, a silver dress that was thin and shiny. The dress had straps and was supposed to be worn without a bra. It was pretty open and shorter than I would have liked, way above my knees. I don't usually wear outfits like this, but today I decided to take it. On the way home, I ran to the store and got everything I needed for dinner. Finally, I tried on the dress just the way I wanted it, my whole look saying just one phrase, take me. I looked pretty good for 30, no wrinkles on my face, and my lips were still plump, except my breasts were hanging down a bit, but not everyone had those. It was hard to make dinner and make sure I didn't mess up my nails, but it worked out somehow. By half past seven, I was completely ready, dinner was ready, and most importantly, my body. I don't remember getting rid of my body hair so thoroughly, the house had a nice woodsy smell after the rain. William was usually back by seven, so everything was just right. When the doorbell rang, I on cotton legs opened the door and was surprised. Standing next to my husband was our neighbor, Liam. 
He was 45 to 50 years old, and I was just not used to calling him by his first name. I was at a loss as to why he was in our house. I didn't talk to Liam much, but William liked to call him or visit him. He said Liam was funny and gave good advice. Look who I met, Anna. Liam came back from his watch yesterday. William seemed really happy. I said hello to them and went straight into the kitchen, hoping William would come to me. Instead, he shouted for me to come in and ask for food. Liam looked at William strangely, clearly aware that he was not welcome here. Anna Chica, what's with the table and your outfit? Liam asked politely and looked me over from head to toe, staring at my tees peeking out from beneath my cleavage. It's William and I's wedding anniversary, ten years now. Oh, I don't want to be here then, so I'll leave you to come back tomorrow. Liam started to get up from his chair, and I started to cheer. What are you doing, Liam? Sit, sit, sit. We didn't plan to celebrate much. William continued to convince him, and he stayed. I locked myself in the bathroom and turned on the water. I did not understand if William was so offended with me, but he saw how I tried and could have asked Liam to leave, but no. After letting a few tears flow, I gathered my thoughts and decided that I would behave as a good hostess. I would be hospitable and William would get it from me tomorrow. So we sat down to dinner, William sitting across from me and Liam to my right. They mostly talked, I just listened quietly and ate my dinner. I finished my meal before the men and slowly sipped my favorite white wine. Anna, will you pour us some brandy? William smiled somehow maliciously. There is no cognac, only wine. How come? I'll bring it right now. Liam quickly got up from the table, probably ran to his place for a bottle. As soon as we were alone, I threw a hard look at William. He could not stand it and just turned away. I think he did not understand what awaited him tonight, but now understand what awaits him tomorrow. William was about to get up from the table. I quickly pulled off one strap and pulled my breasts out. He couldn't resist that. What are you doing, you idiot? Get rid of it. I tried to be persuasive and stern. William didn't answer anything. He reached for his chest. But when I slapped him on the arm, he got up from the table and went into the bathroom. It was hurtful. When the comic arrived, I drank the wine in a glass, gathered up the dirty dishes and started washing them. I ran the sponge over the dishes with such force that it left marks and scratches, but I didn't care. When I was done with the dishes, I thought about going to bed, but I wasn't going to flush the evening down the toilet. I wanted to have fun and socialize. About half of the cognac had already been drunk and the conversations and laughter became much louder. When I sat down at the table, Liam poured me some wine and complimented my appearance. I thanked him and bent down a little, thus revealing a more interesting view. I don't know why I did it. It was just a reflex, and I wanted to make William a little jealous. In spite of my efforts, I couldn't get into the men's conversations because I had no understanding of their cars and other machinery. I was frankly bored until William suggested a game of cards. For as long as I can remember, I have always been good at cards. During my student days, so many times the guys played strip games with me, but they went home in their underpants. Quickly checking the cards, I handed them out. The card was going my way, and at almost every game I left the game first, leaving the men to deal with each other. In my slightly drunken head came up with what I thought was a fun idea to play for a kiss. William and I will kiss on the lips, just like you and him, and I'll kiss you on the cheek. All right? They laughed and silently dealt the cards. I lost the first game and had to kiss them. William felt my lips and immediately pulled away, but Liam, while I was kissing him on the cheek, took me by the waist. I was a little embarrassed, but I didn't let it show. We continued to play. It was fun to see them kissing each other on the lips. I laughed at the top of my voice, and William's disgruntled look was a great pleasure. After half an hour of play, the men went outside for a smoke. My wine was almost out, and so was their cognac. At last, this evening would be over. However, 
Once they went in, they drank a drink, and William started to go get a new bottle. Well, I guess I'll go to bed then. I drained my glass. William didn't even look at me and walked out the door. I sat down in my seat, disgruntled, and Liam had already dealt the cards. I had nothing to do, so I played, and for some reason I kept winning, which made Liam have to kiss me. Every time he didn't miss an opportunity to touch my back or shoulders, it must have been unpleasant. But I think the alcohol smoothed things out. Anna, maybe the winner would tell me where to kiss him, huh? Liam suggested a strange idea. I thought it was funny. Asking him to kiss my feet would be fun. Ah, come on. I laughed. I won the first game, and I got the urge to kiss my feet right away, which was funny. But Liam got a little carried away and started kissing my toes, so I had to raise my voice a little. I lost the second game with a bang. Kiss me on the lips, and a chica. But standing up, he grinned. I had no choice, so I got up from the chair. Liam had to bend over due to the height difference, and I slowly reached for his lips. How disgusting it was. I closed my eyes, not wanting to look at it. Steppa dug into my lips, took me by the waist and pulled me against him, and began to kiss me passionately. I thought it was too much, and after counting to three, I began to pull out of his embrace. It took a while, but I broke free. I'm sorry, I got carried away, but it's hard to keep my temper in check around such a beautiful woman. Liam sat back down and dealt the cards. The third game was on me. I asked to kiss the other leg, and this time Liam started right away with the toes, and not just kissing. This went on for a minute. I closed my eyes and frankly forgot myself. He did it so skillfully. I didn't realize right away that he had stopped and was already sitting at the table. It was uncomfortable to open my eyes and see his joyful face. I lost the fourth game disappointingly. I had a trump nine and Liam a ten. He asked me to stand up again, and this time I somehow kissed him more bravely and for a much longer time. Without realizing it, I myself began to kiss him and press against him. The alarm that went off outside brought me to my senses, and I pulled away. My cheeks burned with shame. I do not know what got into me, but I quickly reassured myself that it was just a kiss. I won the next game easily and silently pointed to my feet. Liam seemed to get a taste for it and caressed my feet and toes with a special fondness, switching between my legs. I don't know how long it lasted, but I only stopped when a low moan escaped my lips. Liam made sure he didn't hear it, but I was sure he did. The sixth game was a hard one. I always had trumps in my hand, but somehow I lost. Anna, could I make a wish, not a kiss? I wondered if he could wish for something indecent, I doubted. If I win, I can make a wish too, right? That was fine with me. I was going to win the next one and send him home. Okay, I can make a wish too. The next game you'll play on my lap, card debt is sacred, dear. He got up from the table and made himself comfortable on the couch. I had no choice, I agreed to it myself, and the opportunity to finally send him home and stay with my husband was tempting. I pulled my dress up so I wouldn't tear it and sat on the very edge of Liam's lap. How do you want to play it now? I tried to fix the situation a little. You just put the cards here. Liam pointed to the couch itself. It was uncomfortable to play, no matter how mad I was at William. What I wanted more than anything was for him to come back and finish the shame. The game started out pretty briskly. With two cards in a row, Liam had to take, and it was a good hand, and I intended to win. So the game started well for me, but ended in defeat and began to wait for its fate. Well, Anna, another wish awaits you. But here's the thing, I have two. Let's do this, you name a number, I'll voice this wish, and if you do not agree, you will fulfill the second one, which I did not name, do you agree? Liam remained calm while he said it. One, I almost shrieked. It was clearer to me that we crossed the line and it could almost end in intimacy. Ooh, the sweetest thing, you get naked and dance on my lap. If William comes, I'll distract him while you get dressed. Liam smiled. I didn't know what to say, 
I thought he was bluffing and wanted me to refuse, but my intuition told me it was worth the wish. No, I choose the other one. I didn't trust my intuition. A, too bad, and the second wish was an innocent kiss. He seemed upset. When I heard that, I put down my cards and reached out to kiss him, but Liam stopped me. I didn't say where, so get down. I sat down at the table and drank the whole glass of water, and when I turned to Liam, he was standing there with his pants down kiss me there five times, only with passion, with love. Uncle Stepan hadn't been kissed there in a long time. Stepan, have some conscience, let's go somewhere else, I'm begging you. I tried to persuade him. Well, well, Anna, you yourself agreed. I announced the terms, I gave you the choice, card debt is such a thing, my child. He said this, he flopped down on the couch. I gathered my courage and pondered for ten seconds, but finally I made up my mind. I'll start quickly and finish quickly. Only five times. Keep your hands to yourself. That's right, Anna. Go ahead. I knelt down in front of him. It was disgusting. But there was no way out, so I reached out and kissed him. Just as I reached for the fourth kiss, the lock of the front door creaked. My heart felt like it was going to fly out of my chest. Uh, sorry Liam. The nearest door was closed. I had to walk around. Here's a bottle. I'll go to the bathroom and be right back. William walked away, and a few seconds later, the bathroom door opened and closed. Liam lowered his gaze to me and smiled wryly, clearly amused by the situation. The hubby runs to get a drink, and his wife makes out with him. And where? I'm sorry, Anna, but I can't help it. I didn't immediately understand what he meant, and after a second, he began to put my mouth on his. I waited until my husband came out of the bathroom and locked myself in, rinsing my mouth and brushing my teeth. I looked at myself in the mirror. It hurt me to tears, but no, I will not let him make me cry. I rinsed my mouth again and left the bathroom. Honey, I'm going to shower and sleep. Good night. I just looked into the room and left without waiting for an answer. My head was spinning. Hundreds of different thoughts prevented me from focusing on one particular one. And in the end, I just sat down on the floor of the shower room and began to think. The only right solution seemed to me to go to bed and think tomorrow, with a sober head, and so I did. I washed for quite a long time. When I entered the bedroom, I saw my husband. He was already snoring. My joy was boundless. Finally, we were alone. I went back to the bathroom and left the towels to dry. As it turned out, the light in the living room was still on. He said to turn off all the electronics, but the light could not turn off. However, there was a neighbor waiting for me. He was just standing by the window. Oh, Anna, just the man I was expecting. Liam turned to me and was beside me in a second. I wanted to thank you for a wonderful dinner and evening and our game. I wish we could do this more often. Give me a kiss goodbye. He looked miserable now. No, Liam, I think it's time for you to go. He said without saying a word and began to put on his shoes. Come on, Anna, a light kiss on the cheek. You've done it so many times today. He already annoyed me, and I reached for him silently. What happened in the next couple of seconds? I didn't realize it myself. In an instant, my mouth was covered, and I was stuck to the wall. Eh, if your hubby hadn't come, he would have shown you how I loved in my younger years. But nothing, he gave us a second chance. Now everything will happen. I know, I know. Don't tell me. I know that all night I wanted to. I can see it right away. Maybe not with me, but I wanted to. I've been getting ready all day and he brought me. So let me give you what you wanted. He sounded like a villain from the movies. But before I could think about it, he started kissing me. The strangest thing was that I liked it and started to reciprocate. But I couldn't do anything anymore and just started enjoying myself. Liam did his thing and left, and I went to the bathroom. As I was washing my face, I couldn't understand what had gotten into me, why I had thrown myself at him. I didn't think our anniversary day would end this way.